to Lauren's Crazy Pet Show. We're coming to you today from the fabulous Chester Dog Fair in Chester, Connecticut, where we are surrounded by some truly gorgeous, gorgeous dogs. But this isn't our only stop in Connecticut today. We're also gonna head up to stores to learn about an especially fun and refreshing activity we can all do with our dogs. Then on to Fairfield for a class on transforming ordinary dogs into supermodels. And finally to Basra, where we found the perfect place to hang out and unwind with some truly soft and fluffy friends. But first, I want to introduce you to Sue. Sue, thank you so much for inviting us here today. This is a fabulous event. We've never been before, but this is the fifth year. It's the fifth annual Chester Ooh. Dog Fair, and it's bigger and better than ever. It's fantastic. You have so many different types of dogs and so much to do. Exactly. So our goal is to have people do more with their dogs. We have all kinds of activities for them to do, from the lure course to agility, also resources for veterinarians are here, trainers are here. Everything you need to know about getting a dog, you can find out right here. Fantastic, because we're gonna find out all about that in a minute, but first, I want you to see where we were. Does your dog, you have a dog? I do, and I have a water dog. Yes. I have a Newfie who's- I right. love Newfies. Love the water. Does swim? Oh, yeah. Oh, then you're gonna love this. Take a look at this. Dogs having so much fun. This is doggy dock diving, and it's as much fun for the dogs as it is for the humans to watch. Woo! We're front and center at a dock diving event, and believe it or not, any pooch can do this. Yes, Lauren, we have so many different dogs here. We have herding dogs, we have sporting dogs, we have little dogs that can actually do it because it doesn't matter where they jump as long as they get off the dock. We have hounds, like Dobermans can do it, anything. Mixed breeds, any kind of dog can do this and any person can do this because it's not really, they don't have to run, they don't have to do anything. Just gotta stand there and throw the toy. We actually teach dogs all the time. Um, during the week we do lessons, we do private lessons and group lessons. Number one thing is to get the dog swimming. We definitely want the dogs to be confident in the pool because as you can see the water is very clear. That's a different image in a pond because a pond is really dirty so when dogs are jumping in a pond they're very confident but in a pool they're not as confident because the water is very clear so they can't see how deep it is so we encourage them to go off the ramp first jumping off the ramp getting the toy building that drive until they're launching off the ramp that's when we go down to the dock dock diving is actually a recognized sport and it's gotten huge over the years um, we're North American diving dogs our organization which is AKC recognized. So any AKC breed can do it, but that does not mean that you have to be a purebred. You could actually be a mixed breed dog. Today is just a regular event, which is, means it's not a qualifier, but we're doing distance jumping. So the dogs are actually starting on the dock and they're gonna come down and just jump for the toy. Later on, we're gonna do what we call air retrieve, where we actually hold the toy two feet over the dock and it comes all into the water. So the toy stays there and the dog has to come run and catch the toy off the machine. Now, Kim, your dog, Bindi, is actually an expert at this. Yeah, Lauren, we've been doing this for about three years and we love it. We look forward to dock diving season every year. Um, the people are great, the other competitors are excellent, and we always have a great time when we come out here. She's always loved the water, and we've tried a whole bunch of different sports along the way, especially here at Central Canine. So when Jess had her pool set up, we decided why not give this a try in, and we literally jumped right into it. What's cool about this is that you can get awards no matter how far you jump. You get a qualifying ribbon anytime your dog goes in, and you can stack those up to get advanced and excellent titles. We have our Doc Novice and our Doc Junior title, and we're hoping to get our Junior advanced this season. And now explain how she's sitting on you. Is this like a trick she does? Or? This is uh, actually something that I do for safety. We hike a lot. Uh, and if she were to ever get injured, I want her to be comfortable with me carrying her out of uh, a hiking trail. So she, we spend a lot of time hiking like this so that she can get used to it and stay safe. Donna, you're actually a novice at this. This is Ava's first time. This is Na Ava's first time. We had a few lessons up here and thought we'd come and try the competition and she has done superior throughout this. We're hoping that we qualify today for a title in the novice beginner division. Well, how did you know maybe this might be 
something she was interested in. Ava's always liked swimming. We, at home, go down to a pond, and she loves to swim and her ducks. So I thought, well, maybe we can try this in a competition, and thus we're here. What was her dive today? Her longest distance was 9 feet 6 inches. Yesterday, she broke that at 10. Everybody's hoping that she breaks that 9 mark today, so I'll have to jump in the pool with her. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> and we actually saw you take part in it. It was kind of like a little dance. It was a shuffle. We all got up on the dock, and uh, there was a line dance, I guess you could call it, that they played. And we all did the steps of the dance. You know, it breaks up the sitting around and waiting for your turn to come and the camaraderie that goes between people when you're at these competitions. So we did a little line dance on the dock. Jessica, you all also offer other things beside dock diving. Right, we do. We actually do barn hunt, we do Ooh. agility, obedience, frisbee, rallyo. So yeah, we actually do a lot of different things here that you can do with your dogs. So you think Carbon can do that? I think he would love it. I've just never been able to get a chance to do it. Oh, well, all right, you never know. That's, uh, I want my Inoki to do it, but who knows? A any dog can do it, apparently. Okay, so when we come back, we're gonna tell everybody about this marvelous event. Um, there's so much to see, so please. Stay tuned. Thank you. If you love jewelry as much as I do, you have to go to Cohen Brothers Jewelry in New York City. Located in the heart of the Diamond District on 47th Street in Manhattan, Cohen Brothers Jewelry has the most exquisite, beautiful pieces. Handcrafted with diamonds, precious stones, gold, platinum, whatever you could want. They even have pet theme creations. So check out Cohen Brothers Jewelry. And guess what? They're animal lovers too. Lauren's Crazy Pet Show is back, and what you're looking at is lore coursing. It is a fun sport. I think any dog can do it, and it's just one of the many activities happening here today at Chester Dog Fair. And Sue is our host, and we are thrilled again to be here, because this is such a diverse event. It is. It's a great event. There's a lot of different activities. You can have a dog that's a rock star or just a dog that maybe can lick peanut butter off the uh -huh. spoon. It doesn't like matter. Do they still <laughs> leave with a ribbon and they have a great time. And there's just so many different activities for you to do with your dog here. Now, I know there's also a couple of really cute cooling stations because we saw a couple of little pups sitting in the pool. I, I love that you've done that. Exactly. It's real important that the dogs are safe and don't get too hot and are comfortable and have a good time. And what I love, Sue, is the diversity of dogs that you have here. It's amazing. I think I've seen just about every single shape and size. And exactly. It's a great, great group of people. And what we love is a lot of the times they're dogs that they've adopted from Homeward Bound. And we love to be able to see them coming back and being happy and being well adjusted because you don't always get to see that when you adopt out dogs. And we should mention, of course, that Homeward Bound put on this event. And some folks might not know what Homeward Bound is? Homeward Bound, we're a group of volunteers, and what we do is we help rescues and shelters find homes for dogs. So one way is we host big adoption events where we get the event, we secure the event, promote the dogs, pre-screen the applicants, do all the work so the rescues just have to worry about their dogs. And then they come to the event and we help them with trainers and meet and greets, and we have a veterinarian on hand, and all of, all of that part is done. And then a couple of months later, we do follow-up visits to make sure everything's going well. That's unusual. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. We love it. Um, we're not a rescue, but we love helping rescues, and it gives us the opportunity to help more rescues. And also, a friend of ours who everybody just saw in our last show, dancing, is going to be here, Carrie, a dancing and doing frisbee. Right. Carrie Neri has come here a few years. She'll be doing her demonstration today with frisbee and dog dance. And you have pie-eating contests. Exactly. You have some obedience. We have canine good citizen certification, so a dog can get actual certified with that title but we also have our little doggy Olympic events are all throughout the event and they're simple like lick peanut butter off the spoon yeah. to we have a marathon down to see which dog will stay in the down position the longest so that's Isn't always that fun great. to watch and I and our friends the dog scouts because my Anoki is a dog scout and your carbon is a dog my carbon scout. and they my haven't copper. Met yet, but yep. there you go so, so yeah they're here you have such a wonderful diversity now I want uh, everybody to know how they can get in touch with you 
um, and help out with Homeward Bound and what you're really looking for. I mean, you help others, but if somebody wants to get involved with the group. We're always looking for volunteers for our adoption events and our fundraisers, which this is. Um, so they can go on our website at homewardboundct.org and there's a page that says, I want to help. And this is so great. And again, we're so thrilled to be here. Thank you so much I, for coming. Don't leave though, because okay. we're going to come back. And when we do, you will not believe how fluffy some dogs can get. Do you groom your dog a lot? My guy has to be brushed all the time. Oh, then you'll love this. <laughs> Stay tuned, everybody. Lauren's Crazy Pet Show will be right back. Hi, I'm here to talk to you about Stairwell Books, a company that you need to know about. We focus on fresh writing by great authors. Books like Abernathy, an American noir. Abernathy starts with a body frozen in the snow. Who is she? A small town is just a jail with no bars. The question is, are you the jailer or are you the inmate? Or books like Tales from a Prairie Journal by Rita Jerram, who has novelized her grandmother Edith's diaries of her life on the Canadian prairie in the 1880s. This book will make you laugh and cry at the highs and low of life in rural Canada. This is just two of the 85 books that have been published by Stairwell Books over the past 15 years. We publish children's books, literary fiction, genre fiction, memoirs, biographies, short story collections, you name it. We have something for everyone. Come find us online or you can order us in quality bookstores. Thank you. Welcome back to Lord's Crazy Pet Show. We are at the Chester Dog Fair. Wonderful turnout here. It's amazing. We've, we've been really, really lucky. We have over 70 vendors. We have music. We have food trucks. Everybody's coming and everybody's bringing their dogs, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah, which is fantastic. And there's a lot of clean dogs too, right? Yes, <laughs> definitely. Take a look at this. You'll see some that are super clean. Hairspray, extensions, airbrush color, well, yeah, I could use some of that, but an eyeball? Wait a minute, this is not on a human. This is on a dog. Can you believe this? And this is Melina, who is a creative groomer who has won numerous contests and awards, and she's giving a workshop today. And Lauren's Crazy Pet Show is here, and I'm so excited because I have been wanting to meet you. I'm a huge fan, Thank and you. you're here at Rough Cuts in Fairfield. Yes. Full house and some spectacular work. Like this here, this is the butt. Yes. <laughs> so how did you get started doing this, Melina? Actually, one of my first grooming shows that I went to, um, I saw all my, they are now my friends. They were all competing on stage. I fell in love with it, and I said to my husband, one day, I'm going to be up there with them. And that wasn't that long ago. It was about two and a half years ago. Unbelievable. But I said to you, you must have some kind of art background, because these are creations. They're like walking paintings. Yes. I'm actually a graphic designer, and it has helped me tremendously, being able to come up with designs, with concepts, to realize what works and what, what doesn't work. Because this is not a piece of paper. This is actually a living oh. animal. And Malia, you know, your work has actually appeared in movies and on TV shows. Yes, I actually had four creative dogs in The Orange is the New Black, season five, episode three. I had my standard poodle as a cheetah, and I had also my chihuahua as a tiger, and I had two of my customers, Bichon, and two pandas. And in the movies? The movies, I did The Greatest Showman. Um, I actually was my first time working on horses, and I painted two black horses into zebras. And you got to meet Hugh Jackman, too. Yes. <laughs> he was so close to me, yet too far, but it was... It was an amazing experience and the highlight of my career so far. Do you write down what you're going to do first sort of thing? Do you have a drawing or a concept? Yes. Well, first um, I draw. I draw my design on a piece of paper. And then, believe it or not, it takes me a couple of days to realize whether that's the direction I want to go or not. Once I'm completely satisfied with my sketch, then I go on and I put it onto the dog and I start carving the dog before I even do any color. Once the design is carved, the next thing that I'm going to do is proceed to color or to dye the hair. And after that's done, we only hairsprayer and put all any art on that we need to put at the shows. She's not gonna walk around with the eye, but this is show we can compete and then we can show our talent and our skill at the grooming shows. At the competitions, exactly. which you've won many, so congratulations. Thank we show you. some of those photos and they are amazing. Thank but you. it seems like it's all so fun. I mean, some people say, oh, why are you doing that? You know, but to me, I think, A, I can see that the dog's absolutely 
absolutely love it because they'd never stand. My Anoki wouldn't stand for three minutes. Exactly. You, know, right? you can see that some of these dogs, because they get the reaction from the owners or from the public, they get so much attention. It just makes the dog happy. They do not know why they're getting attention <laughs> because they don't know what just happened. They don't know why they got color. They don't even know what hair color it is. But even when you do only the ears or only the tail, I can guarantee you that dog knows that it looks good and it brings so much joy to everybody. We saw the Australian mix who had just a sort of enough on. So that you can do something small to something like this. Just with a splash of color, it's... it will bring so much happiness to everybody. And it looks so good. It's so much fun. And it just takes about 20 to 30 minutes. It really doesn't take a long time like some people might think that it does. You can tell they love it. And, the, yeah. and this is an elephant on the butt we saw. Yeah. Explain what else we, we, what she has. I have have an elephant on the, she is actually fun. <laughs> Imagine an elephant on your butt. Yeah. So this, we have a giraffe, which I have the eye. Oh, wow. So we have a giraffe and she has leaves coming out of here. So it looks like she's eating oh, the leaves. Right. And these are all going to be leaves and I'm going to make a tree actually. I'm going to improve my design by making a tree oh, in isn't there. Isn't that great? Uh, she is a little <laughs> gazelle. Right now we don't have the horns or the ears, but when you get to see the pictures, you'll see the complete uh, horns in the ear. It's just amazing how you think this up. It's yeah. like incredible. And then even on and the other the, side, on the other I love side, this. Oh. We have a lion. This is just just hair hair, but we're gonna start carving it more and making sure. But these are the eyes of the lion, this is the the mouth of the lion, and this is the mane, which I'm gonna make some changes to as So it's well. really an example of like a preliminary stage. Correct. This is the natural stage. This is her hair that just been colored. And that's it. So, Melina, if people want to get in touch with you, because you do have a website, and maybe yes. you can help them, or they can see some more of your unbelievable designs, how would they do that? Well, my company, my mobile company, is called Driving Me Nuts, like nuts ah. in the hair. I'm, I am mobile, so it's driving me nuts. Um, I am on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram. You can get in touch with me, send me a message. If you have any questions or any concerns, I'm always able to help you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So can you believe all those colors? Is I'm, that crazy? That's amazing. But they don't hurt the dog. Some people are a little iffy about it, but it's like works of art. I, it is. I don't I think mine it. would stand for it. I know. Well, mine's all black, so it would be really hard <laughs> to do it. It's hard to get the color in. <laughs> all right. Well, we have another wonderful segment for you, so please stay tuned. We are going to hang out with some really sort of unusual guys and gals up in Bosworth, Connecticut. Coming up next. Awesome. We'll be right back. There's a jewel right in the middle of downtown Fairfield, Connecticut, the Connecticut Audubon Society and Birdcraft Museum and Sanctuary. It's the oldest private songbird sanctuary in the United States, and it's an amazing oasis of nature. In their six acres, there are more than 120 species of birds. You're guaranteed a wonderful bird watching experience. Find them at ConnecticutAudubon.org. We are back, Sue and I, and we are surrounded by dogs everywhere. And we just showed you a really fun segment with that creative grooming. That was crazy, right? That is. That is. Well, now we are going to show you some other beautiful creatures. And I'm always wondering, I wonder what a creative groomer could do with their coats. <laughs> Take a look. Oh, look at this precious face. This is Yeti, and she is an alpaca. And believe it or not, we found a jewel of a farm in southeastern Connecticut where you can hang with the alpacas. That's right, they rule the place. We're in Basra, Connecticut at Six Paca Farm. There are dozens of alpacas here, and this is really a destination spot. We see people hanging out with the alpacas, having a wonderful day. Yes, people come from all over, whether it's from New York or just locally coming by just to chill out because they're so calm. They're and, so uh, cute. I yes. mean, many people have never seen one before and they probably wonder, is this a llama? Is it an alpaca? Well, we know it's an alpaca, but what's the difference? Size. Alpacas are 130 to 180 pounds, but the uh, llamas, their head is about this tall and they're twice the height and weight. And now I noticed that they are sort of friendly here and, you know, the people seem to be enjoying like petting them but you said don't pet on the head right well they don't really care for the tops of their heads because they're just going to kind of bop and weave like a boxer oh. <laughs> some of them don't mind but the majority of them won't be like our dog well, do they fetch like a dog <laughs> they will not <laughs> but do they make a good pet because they seem to be becoming more and more popular with people getting them they 
are becoming popular because I think they're very affordable. They uh, don't eat much. It's mostly the second cut hay. So people who don't have the pastures, they can uh, still keep them right in their yard area and you can fit seven to 10 alpacas on one acre of land. Do they like to be more than one together? They are a herd animal. They definitely need to be with at least a buddy. So you always need to have two. Now, there are different colors here. They seem like different types. From white to black, there's 22 natural colors. The different beiges, the fawns, and then even Sam here is a modern gray. Very, very uh, colorful. Just for this type of alpaca, there are two different breeds of alpaca. These are the wakayas, and they're just soft, more teddy bear type. And then there's the Surrey alpacas, and the Surreys have more like a long dreadlock fiber. Both of them are extremely soft, and the fiber is hypoallergenic. Uh, the Incas used to use that just for their royal garments. We will use that from head to toe hats all the way down to socks or boot liners. They're not hurt doing that. Just like we get a haircut or the military give you a buzz cut with the shears. That's exactly what happens. So Joe, it's great to hang out with the alpacas, but you actually have your own mill, which is where we are right now. And this is where the magic happens. This is where you get the raw fiber and you spin it to gold. <laughs> exactly, it works out great. My day starts on the farm. Then I start right in here about midday and finish with the alpacas in the end. Oh, it's so, so fantastic. So what? how does it work? You have all this raw fiber that you get. Correct. You have your flock of sheep, herd of alpacas. You can shear them, bag it, and then you're able to just mail it. It doesn't weigh that much, so you ship it to us. They'll skirt it, they'll tumble it to get all the debris out. So you then also wash it. I see there's a, a huge washing machine there. You said there's only like two in the United States well, like that? There's only a few <laughs> in the U.S., but it's a seven-bay wash system and then we set it out to dry put it through the picker then it goes through the carding machine and then we go through the pin drafter the spinning frame and then the plying Ooh. frame so then we'll wind it into a skein so that's what's so time consuming all the different steps so of course we could not leave without coming to your fantastic store because this is really what the mill is all about because this is the finished products. This Absolutely. is something, oh, these are so soft, Joe. That they are, and they're all hand knit. Oh, wow, and we noticed that there were ladies knitting, so you also give knitting instructions. Well, we do have a knitting group a knitting on group. Thursdays. Beginners to experience, and it's just very relaxed. Ah, and I noticed there's so many different colors here. All the different Different weights. kinds. Oh. These here came from our animals, and we had uh, dyed it. Linda dyes it right at home. All different kinds of hats. Now, what are those? Joe. These here are handbags and we also have the handbags made up from the rug yarn. And you'll sell the yarn as well. Now what is this? This seems, oh this is really fluffy fluff. For those folks that are gifted in hand spinning, they'll take the roving. This roving just comes right from the carding machine. So the old fashioned spinning wheels, they can just take the roving itself. Oh, this is soft as butter. Oh, oh and I have to see these. Joe, these are beautiful. These are all made from the alpaca. Yes, the <gasps> handmade shawls oh. as well as the uh, oh. scarves. Oh, they're and, so soft. And they're very lightweight too. For and their they're warmth. very lightweight. I can't get enough of these. They're so lightweight and so soft. And Joe, you know what else I love? You also have these locally produced farm fresh products here. Homemade ice creams, yep. butters. You have the, the cookies. cookies. You even have little doggy cookies. And you the have cheese. the maple syrup. So you can come and you can hug an alpaca. You can have a little bit of cheese. You can have a little bit of coffee. You can get something really soft and special. How can people find you? Come to uh, www sixpaca.com. Sixpaca. It's really a really wonderful spot. Thank you so much for inviting us here. Good to have you. Thank you. So have you been up close and personal with an alpaca? I can honestly <laughs> say no. <laughs> They're cute though, those little pompadours. Anyway, everybody, uh, we're just having so much fun. Thank you so much, Sue, for inviting us. Your fifth annual festival, and I'm sure you're going to have many more. Exactly. This is this is a tradition now for Homeward Bound. And it's all to benefit Homeward Bound. Correct. So if you want to find out more, you can go to your website. Homewardboundct.org. Great day in Chester, Connecticut. Uh, thank you all for joining us. We hope you'll join us every Sunday on my TV 9 right here in Connecticut and also find Lauren's Crazy Pet Show on Facebook.
and Instagram and YouTube. You're going to follow us, right? Of course. I already do. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. This has been Lauren's Crazy Pet Show.